Hi everyone, welcome back to Learn with Med Nuggets. So in today's video, I'm going to teach you a microbio question. Microbio is a topic that we have never touched on before. So let's dive right into the question. Which of the following complications is this patient at increased risk of developing? A 57-year-old man comes to the physician because of a three-month history of sharp, shooting pains in both legs. Ten years ago, he had a painless lesion on his penis that resolved without treatment. Physical examination shows small pupils that constrict with accommodation but do not react to light. Sensation to pinprick and light is decreased in both legs and patella reflexes are absent bilaterally. He has an unsteady broad base gait. Which of the following complications is this patient at increased risk of developing? So before trying to figure out what is the complication associated with this condition, we need to find out what this condition is. What is going on in this patient? Right? So this 57-year-old man is coming with a three-month history of sharp shooting pains. Right? So whenever a question talks about a sharp shooting pain, it refers to neuropathic pain. Neuropathic pain is always sharp shooting, right? This kind of pain. Whereas ischemic type of pain is more of a squeezing pain, a tightening pain, right? But when it comes to neuropathic pain, it's always going to, the question will always have described that kind of pain as a sharp, a sharp pain, a shooting pain that runs um, along the extremities, right? 10 years ago, so 10 years ago, this patient had a painless lesion on his penis. So what we know is this patient had a painless lesion on his penis and now he's having neurologic signs and symptoms, right? So what's the diagnosis? This is syphilis, right? An ulcer on the penis and neurologic signs and symptoms points us towards a diagnosis of syphilis, right? Now, the question is, what is the complication associated with syphilis? So, let's move on to the answer options, right? Um, first option, option A is atrioventricular block. Atrioventricular block can be seen in conditions like Lyme disease and infective endocarditis. Atrioventricular blocks cannot be seen in syphilis, right? So that is wrong. Option B, mitral valve regurgitation. Mitral valve regurgitation can be seen in conditions like rheumatic fever, right? Rheumatic fever can also cause neurologic signs and symptoms, but the most characteristic neurologic um, condition that is caused by rheumatic fever is called Sydenham's Chorea, right? There you can see all these choreoathetic movements um, in patients, right? So option B is also wrong. Squamous cell carcinoma of the penis can be seen in um, HPV, right? In human papilloma virus. Human papilloma virus can go into squamous cell carcinoma, right? And also in human papilloma virus, you... Um, get these raised cauliflower-like lesions. Right. It's not a painless ulcer, but um, the lesions caused by HPV are raised and they are cauliflower-like. Right. That's the characteristic description they are going to give you if they want, if they are going after HPV. Okay. Then, uh, so C is also wrong. D is inflammatory polyarthritis. In which condition would you be able to see inflammatory polyarthritis? In disseminated gonococcal infection. Right? In disseminated gonococcal infection. In gonorrhea. You can easily remember the features of disseminated gonococcal infection with the pneumonic STD. We all know that gonorrhea is a sexually transmitted disease. It's an STD. Where S stands for septic arthritis of the knee. T stands for tenosynovitis 
of hands and feet and D stands for dermatitis. At least in your board exam questions, um, disseminated gonococcal infection will present with this triad of septic arthritis in the knee, tenosynovitis of hands and feet and dermatitis, right? Oh, so you can't see any of those features in this question, in this patient. So D is raw. Option E, septic embolism in the cerebral artery. Septic emboli can be seen in infective endocarditis, mostly in left-sided infective endocarditis, which is commonly caused by organisms like Staph aureus and Strep bovis, right? Not in syphilis. That leaves us with option F, thoracic aortic aneurysm. That is the correct answer for this question. Now let's go into details of syphilis, right? So syphilis is um, a disease that affects the posterior columns of your spinal cord, right? Posterior columns um, are responsible for joint position sets, right? Therefore, these patients will lose um, joint position sets. And if you move uh, back to the question, over here, you can see that this patient has small pupils that constrict with accommodation but do not react to light, right? Pupils that uh, ac accommodate but do not react are called Argyle-Robertson pupils, right? This is called the Argyle-Robertson pupil. It's also known as the prostitute's pupil because these pupils can accommodate, but they do not react. Okay, right. Um, and now you must be wondering, how does syphilis cause thoracic aortic aneurysms? So in syphilis, these pyrochetes, they can damage the vasa vasorum of the aorta. Right. What is the vasa vasorum? Vasa vasorum are the tiny blood vessels that supply the uh, that supply blood and nutrients to the aorta. Right. You know, aorta supplies blood to the entire body. There should be something. There should there should be some vessels that supply blood to the aorta as well. So the blood vessels, the tiny blood vessels that supply blood to the aorta, are called the vasa vasorum. When in syphilis. The Treponema pallidum spirochetes, they can damage these vasa vasorum and cut the blood supply to the aorta. As a result of that, your aorta can dilate, right? So when your aorta dilates, you know, the aorta has the aortic valve, right? This aortic valve also stretches along with the wall of the aorta. As a result of that, the aortic dilation caused by syphilis caused by these pyrochetes can cause can lead to aortic regurgitation right because these valves also because as the wall of the aorta stretches it stretches the valves along with it right as a result of that it can cause it can leave a space here so blood can regurgitate back into the left ventricle from this um, from the space between the two valves which we call aortic regurgitation right so those are the important points that you need to remember about syphilis and um, i also want to brush on the um, kinds of penile ulcers you um, will come across in exams that you commonly come across in exams right so when it comes to penile ulcers right there are a few microorganisms that can cause penile ulcers, right? And lymphadenopathy. So let's make a table with ulcer and lymphadenopathy. An easy way to differentiate which organism causes um, this penile ulcer and which organism does not, an easy way to differentiate between uh, these organisms is to remember which organisms cause. Painful ulcers and which organisms cause painless ulcers. 
and which organism causes a painful lymphadenopathy along with the ulcer and which organisms cause a painless lymphadenopathy with along with the ulcer right so first let's move on to syphilis because that is the um topic of discussion today right so syphilis cause in syphilis everything is painless that's the easiest way to remember it right in syphilis everything is painless right the ulcer is painless and the lymphadenopathy is painless right when it comes to hsv both the ulcer and lymphadenopathy are painful everything is painful right then chlamydia when it comes to chlamydia the penile ulcer okay the ulcer is painless but the lymphadenopathy is painful okay then the next organism is hemophilus ducreae right also known as the lesion is also known as chancoid right hemophilus ducreae causes a very painful ulcer an extremely painful ulcer right also um in in these ulcers you these ulcers will have gray exudates in the base and also if you um look at this ulcer if you put if, if you put a piece of uh, this ulcer under a microscope you will be able to see a school of fish pattern right so the hemophilus ducreae they um sort of arrange themselves in a school of fish pattern which you will be able to see um under the microscope right so these are two characteristic features of this uh lesion right and when it comes to lymphadenopathy that is also extremely painful right since um hsv and hemophilus ducreae they both can cause painful ulcers and painful lymphadenopathy the only way to differentiate between these two organisms is to go is to look look at these gray exudates in the base and the school of fish pattern right then uh, the other organism is donovanosis donovanosis is caused by klebsiella right and donovanosis can cause a painless ulcer and no lymphadenopathy right so if you can remember this table that will be really helpful uh, when it comes to solving these types of questions um this is a table that i kind of made on my own after doing multiple questions so if you can remember this table it will be very easy for you to um figure out the answer when it comes to a question in your board exam right so thanks for tuning in with us today have a great day